Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about polynomial inequalities in uh, one variable and then in two variables. All right. So our objectives: we want to graph inequalities in one variable using a number line. Uh, then we want to graph inequalities in two variables and identify the appropriate solution on the graph. And then we're going to graph systems of inequalities in two variables and identify the appropriate solutions on a graph. You should have seen at least these uh, last two in your prior classes, so this should be review for you. All right, so let's talk uh, at a high level. Uh, we've been discussing polynomials and their general uh, graphical structure, and so I've just written a fun polynomial here. And uh, the question is, where is a polynomial less than zero? All right, so your quick answer should be, right, it's going to be less than zero, where the value for y is less than zero. So if I have some function, y is equal to x to the fifth plus 4x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus 1. We know that the graph is <clears throat> uh, below the x-axis where y is negative or y is less than zero. All right, so uh, we've identified that, or I've identified that in the red. And so now we want to define specifically uh, those locations or those intervals uh, where the polynomial is less than zero. So what we're going to do is something similar that, uh, to what we did when we were testing intervals. Uh, we're going to go ahead and identify the intervals uh, where we have the red uh, sections, right? So I'm going to write a set of inequalities that describes where the polynomial is less than zero, where y is less than zero given the polynomial. We've graphed this fun uh, function. We've identified where the x-intercepts are. We've identified where the graph is below the x-axis, uh, x where y is less than zero. And now we're going to identify the interval. So first interval, x is less than negative 4. That's where y is going to be less than 0. And then the other ones are going to be uh, x is between negative 2 and 1, and x is between 2 and 5. So we've identified the intervals uh, where the true statement, uh, that function that we showed you previously, was less than 0. Right? So those would be the solutions to uh, the inequality. Right, so just to go back, an interval is the set of real numbers between two other real numbers or between a real number and infinity. Right, so we have negative 2, 1, and 3. So an interval is uh, the set of real numbers between these uh, other real numbers or between a real number and infinity. So this would be an interval. Negative 2 to 1 is an interval. 1 to 3 is an interval. And then 3 to infinity is an interval. So I can draw, let's just draw infinity in to the side here. All right, so this would be negative infinity on this side, and then <clears throat> positive infinity on uh, this side. All right, uh, so now the next question is, where is a polynomial greater than zero? And of course, your immediate response should be uh, in these red sections here. Okay, uh, this is where the graph uh, of the function is y is greater than zero. And so now we need to figure out the intervals where the graph is greater than zero. We're going to identify the uh, intervals, negative 4, or x is between negative 4 and negative 2, x is between 1 and 3. Uh, and remember, it's greater than zero, so I'm not including uh, 1 as part of the solution. Uh, so be careful not to use the less than or equal to sign or greater than or equal to sign. Uh, so I've identified the intervals where the graph is greater than zero. And then those are going to be my solutions. All right, so let's take uh, an example and let's go through the entire process. And then you're going to do one on your own for classwork. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x is less than 0. All right, so we want to find the zeros of the polynomial by factoring as if the inequality were an equation. So we're going to pretend for now it's an inequality. I'm going to distribute out the common factor of x. And then I'm going to factor the quadratic. And I end up with the zeros of x is equal to 0, 3, and negative 1. And I'm going to plot these on a number line. Uh, so 0, uh, negative 1, and 3. And then I'm going to identify, so find the zeros of the polynomial by factoring, which we did. And then we want to plot the zeros on a number line and identify the intervals. So here, interval x uh, is less than negative 1. Remember, this is negative infinity here. And this is positive infinity here. So there's nothing. Uh, x is greater than 3. There, there's no other value to the left of x here. So x is less than negative 1, x is between negative 1 and 0, x is greater than 0, uh, x is less than 3, x is greater than 3. So now we've identified just the intervals. 
right? The last step now is to find out where this straight, uh, this uh, polynomial statement, uh, inequality is true. So where is it less than zero? So we're gonna have to go back to testing the intervals and we're gonna do that by testing a value uh, that's on the interval. So the first one I'm gonna test negative two and I'll test a value between negative one and zero not inclusive. Same thing between zero and three not inclusive and then greater than three. And we're gonna come up uh, with a sign SIGN as to whether it's negative or positive. If it's negative, then it means the polynomial is less than zero in that area. If it's greater than it means, or positive, it means it's greater than zero in that area. And we're looking for less than here. All right, so uh, I've gone through the math, negative 0.52, and then four, I've tested these intervals. So here I've tested these intervals, and I end up with negative, positive, negative, positive. All right, so I know it's less than zero uh, in uh, this interval and in this interval. So I'm going to represent my solution uh, here as x is less than negative 1 and then x is between 0 and negative 3 because this is where when I go back to identify uh, where the intervals are negative or positive, it's less than 0. If it were greater than 0, which I think we'll investigate, then the solutions where it's positive would be the intervals that would satisfy the inequality. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about interval notation uh, and parentheses and brackets. So parentheses means that this value, negative 1, is not included as part of the interval, so less than negative 1. Uh, and then infinity uh, always has parentheses. Uh, the value of infinity is not included in the solution. So when x is between 0 and 3, not of an inclusive of 0 and 3, then we're going to use parentheses. All right, when uh, this value here to the right is included in the solution, so x is less than or equal to negative 1, negative 1 is part of the solution, so now I'm going to use a bracket here. Uh, same thing here, x is greater than uh, or equal to 0, so 0 now is part of the solution. I'm going to use that bracket, uh, but x is less than but not equal to 3. It's going to be parentheses. So now I want you to start using uh, the proper interval notation to identify the solutions uh, for the intervals. All right, so classwork problem number one. I want you to go ahead and solve this problem. Uh, I'm going to walk through in just a moment. So solve this on your own, and this will be due as classwork. All right, so uh, we're going to solve as if we were uh, solving for an inequality, right? I found the intervals, I tested the intervals, and then I've identified the solution where the graph is less than zero. Uh, so my interval solution would be uh, negative three, x is between negative three and five. And if I were to write this using inter interval notation, I would write negative three uh, and uh, five. And so it's a set of uh, values between negative 3 and 5. All right, uh, so uh, there's your answer uh, as an inequality and then the interval notation here. Okay, uh, let's move on. Classic problem number two. I want you to solve the inequality. I'm going to pause here while you solve it. All right, so uh, we need to be careful here because we're looking for the values that are less than 0. So I need to add 2 to both sides and then do my factoring, all right? So uh, when we're solving the inequality of the polynomial, we need to create a polynomial on the left side and the right. Uh, the inequality is going to be less than uh, or greater than zero in this case. So I'm going to find out where my zeros are. We're going to plot those on the number line. We're going to identify the intervals. We're going to test the intervals, and my solution ends up being uh, where it's less than zero, x is less than negative two, uh, or x is between uh, 1 half and 1. So again, in interval notation, I have uh, infinity here, comma, negative 2, not inclusive, or uh, 1 half, uh, comma, 1. Uh, and those are my solutions using interval notation. All right, so now we want to talk about uh, graphing uh, inequalities in two variables and identify the appropriate solution on a graph. Uh, of course, you guys can pause this at any time, right, uh, if you're lost or go back. Uh, so please do that. So a linear inequality in two vari variables is written just like a linear inequality, uh, or a linear equation with an inequality. So these are just different ways, greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Uh, this uh, line has been wrapped. Uh, all right, so here's uh, a linear inequality. 2x plus 3y is greater than 5. So we want uh, to find a solution of the linear inequality, and that's going to be an area, and any ordered pair in that area would be a solution. So we're going to represent the area by shading in 
the proper side of uh, what's really the equation for a line. Uh, and then uh, that will be our solution. So let's go through the process of uh, representing the solution for this inequality, linear inequality. So 2x plus 3y is greater than 5. Uh, now I, I want to write uh, the equation in slope-intercept form and then draw a line uh, pretending that this line y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds is actually the line uh, that's represented by an equal sign, but we need it for this inequality. So uh, we're going to graph the boundary line by changing the inequality sign to an equal sign temporarily. We're going to rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form, which we've done, and then we're going to go ahead and graph that line. So when we graph it, notice that uh, it's going to be a dotted line. Here, this is the line y is equal to. We have an inequality that's greater than not equal to, so it's going to be dotted. So the line is not part of the solution. All right. So the next step is to test a point not in the boundary line to determine if that point represents a solution. If that point that you test is a solution, you're going to shade the area with on the side of the line in which the point is located or coordinate. If it's not, then we're going to shade the side of a line in which the point is not located. All right, so let's go ahead and test a point. Zero, zero is always a great point to test. So I'm going to test zero in the solution. Zero is greater than zero, uh, two thirds times zero, which is zero, plus five thirds. So is zero greater than five thirds? No, it's not. So we test this point. This side is not part of the solution. So we're going to shade in this region. And this region represents uh, our uh, the solution to the inequality, okay? All right, uh, so you're going to uh, complete classwork problem number three, and you're going to show me the solution. Uh, I'm not going to show you the answer. You can do this on your own. All right, so uh, graph systems of inequalities in two variables. Identify the appropriate solutions. <clears throat> okay, so now we have uh, two inequalities. Y is less than x plus 2. And now y is less than or equal to x squared minus 4. We're going to deal with a parabola and a line. All right, so the first thing we want to do is take these separately, uh, graph one of the inequalities, and then graph the second one and find out where they overlap. So we're going to graph each independently and find the area that is common to both, and we're looking for a graphical answer. All right, so y is less than x plus 2. So I'm going to graph the line here as if y is equal to x plus 2. This is a dotted line because... It's not part of the solution. I'm going to test 0, 0 as a point in the system. 0 is less than 0 plus 2. That's true. So I tested my point 0. It's on the side of the line that meets the solution. I'm going to shade in this area. This area represents the solution for y is less than x plus 2. So it's a graphical representation. All right, so now I'm going to go on to graph uh, the solution for y is less than x squared minus 4, but first I'm going to draw my parabola as though this were equals here. And notice it's a solid line because I have this equal sign here, uh, less than or equal to, so this is solid, whereas this is dashed because this is less than. All right now I'm going to test a point. 0, 0 again is a great, it's not in line, 0, 0. And I notice that 0 is less than 0 minus 4. That is not correct. So this area inside the parabola is not part of the solution. I'm going to shade in everything outside of the parabola. All right, so now I have my two shaded regions, and I'm going to find out uh, the regions that are common to both. All right, so here's part of the solution. <clears throat> and I notice it's where the two areas overlap, and I'm going to identify that area here in both blue and in gray, and that represents my graphical solution to... Uh, the system of linear inequalities, All right? And that's what we're looking for. All right, so your last homework problem, classwork problem, is going to be to graph the system of inequalities. I'm going to change the direction of the inequality sign for both of these. You're going to show me your answer. That's it for this edition of Otten Math. Thanks for joining. Come back and uh, talk to us next time when we talk about... Uh, more graphing of polynomials.